Welcome to part two of Why Teach Vocabulary with Jane Deanard, Science Consultant. And David Evans, the Social Studies Consultant. Well, last webcast, we indicated to you that we were going to teach you the strategies of Morzano's research. But before we do that, Jane, I came across some research um, from Robert Morzano, and I thought that it would be a good idea to, uh, to bring this to your attention. In that, if you remember from our last webcast, you talked about how many words that, you know, science teachers um, had to go through and it was quite extensive and I remember the one uh, methyl orange kind of tripped me up but uh, if you look at this research you can clearly see that in uh, social studies there are more words than than any other subject area and um, it, the other thing I, I noticed too from this for social studies teachers out there is the jump from level one in general history 162 words to 560 so that is a significant jump for our okay David teachers. right so maybe <laughs> history has some words you know, science is still significant, so we'll just move on. So I think it really what it uh, speaks to is the fact that we need to ensure that, that we are using vocabulary strategies and that we are, you know, building the foundation for our students. And you can see um, from this research um, that 83% of our students will return, retain the concepts if there is direct vocabulary instruction with words related to. And uh, Jane is going to uh, provide some examples today um, that will show this, tapping into... Marzano's five-step process. You know, speaking about Marzano, um, we'll, we would like to show you the website that Marzano has to offer. Um, it's Marzano Research Laboratory, and I think David will say something about it. I, I will say um, a great uh, resource that you may want to get your hands on is uh, Marzano's book, The Art and Science of Teaching. Um, this book uh, just has a wealth of information, and it, not just on vocabulary, I mean basically on effective teaching. So uh, some great materials here and workshops um, that might be for the future though because we know how tight the dollars are but uh, nonetheless there are some great uh, resources that you can get your hands on. All right so we are looking at today on uh, step one in this process which is providing a description explanation or example of the new term. Traditionally in science we might give the terms out uh, to the students as a glossary and ask them to provide definitions for us but here's a strategy that uh, is a kind of backwards way of doing it. For example Take a look at that picture. What kid wouldn't love to look at that picture? Pretty intimidating. Uh, it figure. is, it is. So instead of offering the textbook definition, the teacher tells an anecdote, okay, that illustrates its meaning. So the teacher might explain that the crocodile and a bird called the Egyptian plover have a relationship that exemplifies mutualism. The crocodile opens its mouth and invites the plover to stand inside. The plover picks things out of the crocodile's teeth. Both parties benefit. The plover gets fed and the croc gets its teeth cleaned. While explaining this relationship, the teacher might show images such as this found on the internet. Finally, after the discussion and the intrigue of the picture, the teacher would then show the word to the student. That's a pretty which brave plover. Is a mutualism. Brave like you, David, for That's working right. with me. Yeah. <laughs> All, <laughs> All, right. <way> down. <laughs> All right, so thank you for watching this next step in uh, our vocabulary process and stay tuned for our next webcast. See you next time.